It was a journey no one expected. Famine in Judah had brought them together in Moab. And now, nothing could tear them apart. For Naomi, the return to Bethlehem was a bitter one. Behind her lay her husband and two sons, buried in foreign soil. For Ruth, a new land, a new people, a redeemer, an extraordinary journey of unyielding devotion, a love story for the ages. Ruth, your people shall be my people. Shalom and welcome to our show. I'm Miles Weiss and this is my wife and co-host Catherine Weiss. We are thrilled today to bring you our new series on the book of Ruth, Your People Shall Be My People. You know, Ruth is a small book, but it's practically a prophetic book because it, it speaks so much about the Messiah, the Church, and Israel. And it's a timely recognition of the role of women in the believing community. It takes place at the time of the Judges. 1,300 to 1,000 years before the coming of Messiah. And it was a time when everyone did that which was right in their own eyes. In fact, the book of Judges ends with the fact that there was lo melech, no king in the land. Yeah, I'm thrilled today to begin this series in the book of Ruth because, as you know, it's one of my, one of my favorite books. I think, you know, the whole Bible is wonderful, but the book of Ruth really emphasizes that God is a restorer. And you see two women suffering great loss, but through the great love of God coming and joining them together, God gives them a legacy. That's right. So let's begin our story of Ruth, your people shall be my people, with chapter 1, verse 1, as we look through this entire book chronologically. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land of Judah. Elimelech and his wife, Naomi, left Bethlehem and journeyed to Moab, about a three or four day trek through the rugged mountains and arid plains surrounding the Dead Sea. And they were joined by their two sons, Malon and Kilian. Greetings from the deserts of Israel. It is a thrill to be here with you and to bring you the Book of Ruth. You know, this story takes place on the road from Moab to Bethlehem. And I'd like to start today by opening the scriptures and starting with Ruth chapter 1, verse 1 in the Hebrew. It says, Vahi bimei shvot hashoftim vahi ra'av ba'aretz. It came to pass when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. This is an amazing story that takes place between 1300 and 1000 BC, before the common era, before the time of Yeshua, of Jesus. And it's really a story of redemption, it's a story of love, and it's really an amazing picture of how God can orchestrate everything, including a famine, to bring about His destiny in people's lives. You know, there are 13 famines in the Bible, and you can know that the, God used the famine for Abraham, for Isaac, for Jacob, and certainly for Joseph to bring about His destiny in each of their lives. And so it is with Ruth and her compatriots. This is the story of Naomi, her husband and sons, and their two daughters-in-law, and how they journeyed from Moab to Bethlehem and from Bethlehem to Moab, looking for the purpose and the destiny that God had for them. They didn't know that. They were fleeing a famine in their own land in Israel, and they were on their way to Moab. When they get there, we'll find out what takes place. This is a love story. It's a story of covenant love. It's a story of romantic love and the story of friendship love. And in this story, we're going to see some amazing turns of events as God orchestrates people's lives together for his purposes. You know, Ruth was a Moabitess, and the Moabites were cursed of God. They were given no quarter with Israel. There was no reason for God to knit her into the destiny of the Jewish people. And yet, in his mercy, in his grace, he took this Gentile, this Moabitess, and knit her in not only to the commonwealth of Israel, but to the very lineage of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. 
How awesome is God that he can take someone from without the blessing of God and bring them in. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you are someone who has felt like you're outside the blessing of God. And I want to say to you that through Yeshua, through Jesus, you can be brought into the blessing of the Lord. He can bring you into your purpose, your destiny, your future, just as he did with Ruth. So let's look at this amazing story. Here we have Naomi, a Jewish lady, and they're traveling to Moab to flee this famine with their sons. And they are on the road in this incredible desert scene you see behind us. Can you imagine what it was like to be traveling along this road back in the day? Here we are in the, the comforts of the modern life today here in Israel, and yet you can sense what an incredible journey and what hardship it must have been for them as they went from Bethlehem to Moab and then back again. What an amazing story we have here. God is in the business of ordering our lives if we'll allow him to. And so we see that here. Ruth, her name means friend. And the other daughter-in-law, Orpah, her name means back of the neck. And we're going to see very soon how those two names are, have so much meaning. You know, I love the names and the meaning of names in the Bible. And when we get to this next story, I'm going to show you a little bit about how the names work together to describe how God moves this story forward. For insightful perspectives of Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. When you call, be sure to ask for our free catalog with the latest videos, books, and music. Our correspondence course, the Institute for Jewish Christian Studies, includes reading packets, teaching CDs, and mail-in tests. You may want to join us on an upcoming tour of Israel or Petra, or cruise the Mediterranean visiting Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Now Naomi and her two sons dwelled in the land of Moab for 10 years. Kelion married Orpah, and his brother Malon married a woman named Ruth. And Naomi's husband, Elimelech, died there in Moab leaving Naomi alone with little more than memories of the way things used to be. You know, names are prophetic in the Bible. They have a meaning. Naomi means pleasant. In a little while, she's going to be asked to be called Mara, which means bitter, because tragedy has begun to befall them. Her husband, Elimelech, whose name means God is my king, has died. And yet, God is going to show that he is the king. He's going to show himself mighty on behalf of our company. The son's names, Mahlon, means ill or sick. And the other son names puny or disappearing. And in fact, they will be disappearing from the scene. We've begun to taste death. And we see that there's trouble is coming to our company. But as I said, God is going to redeem. He's going to show himself mighty on their behalf. You know, the time of famine speaks of several things. It's not only a time of the famine physically, but also it speaks of a famine of the hearing of the word. And you know, sometimes today it seems like we're in a season like that, where all around the world, the, the world is dividing into two camps, those who follow the word of God and those who do not. So we need a renewal. We need something to overcome the famine of the hearing of the word in our lives today. land of Zion, next year in Jerusalem, the Shana Haba'a the Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem, O oh Lord will be with you and no more tears, O oh Lord thy kingdom come, thy will be done next year, the Shana Haba'a the Yerushalayim, 
next year in Jerusalem, the Shana of the Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. Catherine and I have been to Israel so many times hosting folks on their pilgrimage to Israel. I don't think there's any greater way to understand the depths of the Bible than by walking through the Bible land. So we really want to invite you to come with us. In fact, I'm so grateful today to have our travel manager, Tracy, with us. Tracy, tell us about the new things that are happening in the on the tours. Well, I absolutely loved your introduction, Miles, because I feel like I have a little bit of a unique perspective um, when it comes to Israel, because I've actually worked in ministry about 20 years. Went to Dallas Seminary for five years, but I tell you, when I stepped my foot in Israel, there was an experience, I wrote an article about three months ago, that my relationship with the Lord went from a dating to a marriage relationship. The intimacy when you're at the Wailing Wall, when you get baptized in the Jordan River, there is nothing like it. And I would trade all my years of ministry experience for 10 days in Israel, and I bet you feel the same way. I absolutely do. I've never been the same since I started going there. And what I love about our tours is they run so smoothly. Uh, we've been going for 28 years, three times a year, never canceled one tour. We have about five or six staff on each bus. We take care of the logistics so you can get to know the Lord. Uh, we, we invite you to come with us. And I understand there's a new guide on board. Tell us about him. Ilan Barkai is totally amazing. He was actually the 2004 Tour Guide of the Year in Israel. And it, uh, it, it's just wonderful. The staff are amazing. And I invite you to come with us. Thank you, Tracy. You know, one way to stay in touch with us is through the Levitt Letter. It's a high-quality magazine full of up-to-the-minute news from the Middle East and great stories about what God is doing in the world today. It's free to you by calling 1-800-WONDERS or going online to levitt.com. Now, our offer of the week is Woman by Divine Design. This book by Dr. Jeffrey Seif and Sandra Levitt is a really clear and original view of the way God, Yeshua, and Paul see women. And I think it will really turn your head around regarding some of the misinformation that's been in the church. Do you want to pick one of these up as well this week? So, let's get back to our story as we continue chronologically through the book of Ruth. And Ruth's husband, Malon, died in Moab, as did Kilion, Orpah's husband. Hearing that the famine in Judah has passed, Naomi and her daughters-in-law begin their journey to Bethlehem, Judah. Each step brings Naomi closer to home, but further from her closest loved ones, now laid to rest in a foreign land. Now we're on the road to Bethlehem, and Naomi has asked the daughters to go back, but they are arguing over whether they will go back or not. This is an amazing turn of events. There must have been something about Naomi that made Ruth want to stay with her. There must have been something about her. And I want to suggest to you that today, there's a prophetic picture in this for us. There's something about Naomi picturing the Jewish people that should draw us and should entreat us to knit our lives to the Jewish people as well. Even in a time of famine, even in a time when there's a difficulty hearing the word, this is a time when we need to stay together. And God is bringing Jews and Christians together in a way that he never has before. Ruth is a picture of covenant love. God did something in Ruth's heart through Naomi to cause her to want to leave her people and the gods of her people and follow after Naomi to a place that she did not even know a place that was far away. And because of this covenant love, she was willing to let go of her family and her ties and move to a road beyond which was pleasant for her, beyond which was a, a place where she knew was familiar. God did something in this love connection between Ruth and Naomi that caused her to come to a surrender in her heart. And she made a commitment to Naomi on the road to Bethlehem that she was determined to keep. You know, it's, it's a commitment that was between one woman and another, but it's often quoted in wedding ceremonies today. 
It's a phrase that we can hear time and time again. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. It's an eloquent expression of love and loyalty between a spouse, but it's also between Naomi and Ruth. And we see the unfolding of friendship. We see the unfolding of giving of oneself. Ruth had no way of knowing that her life and giving up of her life would benefit her in the, in the end. You know, this reminds me of a scripture. If you seek to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. This story has special meaning for us because 25 years ago, this month, we were married and at our wedding, the Song of Ruth was sung and Catherine, the Gentile, committed to Miles the Jew and said, your people shall be my people and your God my God. And I think that's the call that's on the church today. The call that's on believers today is to not only knit ourselves to the God of Israel, but also to the people of Israel. And that's part of what we'll see in the story of Ruth is that, that the calling is not only to the God of Israel, but also the people. And so often people uh, in the body, in the church around the world, they love the God of Abraham, they love the God of Israel, but they don't stand with the Israelis. They don't stand with the Jewish people. That's why it's such a thrill for us to be part of this ministry and to be able to call you along with us to stand with Israel and the Jewish people. That is the calling that's on the church today. You know, Naomi was a widow at this point. Her husband had died and death had really been a taste in all of their lives because now we know that her sons had died too. It's one thing to lose a husband, mm. but it's another thing to lose your only two sons. Mm. So something that Ruth was able to do by letting go of her, of her family ties and move on with, with Naomi was a beautiful thing. Orpah began the journey, but she got only halfway and she, there wasn't quite enough for her to continue on all the way to Bethlehem. There's a teaching in the Bible about the redemption of, that, of the people who are widows. God's always after us in our hearts to take care of widows and orphans. And Ruth is one of the most amazing pictures of how God takes care of the widows. And this is what we're going to see when they get to Bethlehem. God is going to orchestrate all of their lives to bring them into contact with the Goel, the kinsman redeemer, who is a picture of the Messiah, a picture of the kinsman redeemer who came to earth to redeem you and me. So this love story is not only about romantic love. It's not only about a daughter-in-law and a mother-in-law, but it's a covenant love story. And this love story was played out on a hill far away 2,000 years ago on a cross in blood for you and for me when God sent his only son to the cross to die for you and for me. That's the picture of the kinsman redeemer who not only is going to redeem the family of Ruth and Naomi, but our kinsman redeemer, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, is the redeemer who came to redeem the entire earth to himself, to whosoever will. And that's what's pictured here in Ruth. It's a beautiful story of the redemption that God has in his mind and heart for all who will say yes to him. And that's what we're going to see unfold here. It's an arduous journey from Moab to Bethlehem. And they're on their way. They're going to come into the land and going to be reinstated in the customs of the time and in the people, with the people of the land. And it's going to be an amazing change for them, having come from Moab. After being there for 10 years, they're going to come into Bethlehem. And in coming into Bethlehem, they're going to establish geographically the place that the Messiah would be born. Because Micah, in chapter 5, verse 2, said, You, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be least among the tribes of Israel, out of you will come he who is destined to reign, who will rule. And so we geographically, by the story of Ruth, we place the birthplace of Messiah ben David, of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, in Bethlehem. And so Ruth is being knit into the lineage of Jesus Christ. Let us take courage in this scene and in these moments and let us not be like Orpah who disappears into history, but let us be like Ruth that clings to the God of Abraham and to the people of Abraham.
music was from Sasha and Anya, our Russian-Israeli friends, and you'll be hearing more of their music later in this series. And now, a special teaching from our friend in Israel, Aryeh Bar-David, a second-generation Messianic believer, war hero. Catherine and I had a chance to spend some time with him while we were there last time, and it's just an amazing man who uh, has a legacy of believing in the Lord in the face of all kinds of circumstances through the wars of Israel. He leads tours through Israel, and he's got a unique insight into the lay of the land. And so he's going to teach us about the topography. He's going to teach us about the distance between Moab and Judah and back. So watch closely. The beautiful story of Ruth took place in a certain country. And the country is the land of Israel. Let us look on the map to be better oriented. We have the blue colors, which represents the waters, the Mediterranean, the big sea, and on the other side, the Jordan Rift with the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. Our story happens on the West Bank and on the East Bank of the Dead Sea. Let us look what are the main nations that we have here. We have Israel, which was Ephraim and Manasseh. We have Galilee in the north. We have the Philistines that were here. On the other side, we have Ammon and Moab, the two nations which are named by the two sons of Lot. Now, the most important for us is the nation of Judah. Judah was located here south of Bethlehem. Our story is taking place actually in Bethlehem and the fields of Moab. They are just one next to the other. Every evening, standing here, when the sun is behind you, you can see in front of you the mountains of Moab. Opposite, when you are standing on Moab mountains, early in the morning, looking westward, you see so beautiful the ranges and the mountains of Judah.
Miles, I mentioned earlier about how this book represents three things for me, a theme of loss, love, and legacy. And we begin to see how the loss has really come to hit home for Naomi and Ruth. Mm -hmm. Elimelech has died and the two sons, so Naomi is now left with not a husband or two sons, and she has only Orpah and Ruth to comfort her. She's a little overwhelmed at this point. Really, it's such an inhospitable land. I mean, you remember being in the Wadi Kelt near where the right. land of Moab would be, and it's just so hot and dry and difficult. And in those days, the men needed to be with the women for protection. Remember, there was no king in the land, so there was a lawlessness going on. So you can imagine how difficult it was for them to be alone at that time. And it's interesting that we, it begins, the story begins with no king, and then we're gonna find out that in fact, the story is all about the king. Well, also in the Hebrew scriptures, a widow literally means a woman without a voice. Mm -hmm. So here is Naomi, Ruth and Orpah, feeling so lonely, so lost, and almost almost at the end of themselves at this point. It's really an amazing story, an incredible dramatic opening. And then we're going to see uh, in the coming weeks how uh, God has his way in knitting their lives together in, a, in an amazing story that points to Yeshua. So be with us next week. Don't miss this series. It's going to be incredible. And until that time, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our offer this week, Woman by Divine Design. In this book, authors Dr. Jeffrey Seif and Sandra Levitt survey the New Testament and explore passages where Jesus and Paul spoke to, for, and about women. You will enjoy this engaging book that will shed light on an often misunderstood subject, women. Woman by Divine Design by Dr. Jeffrey Seif and Sandra Levitt. Also, please call toll-free or write to receive our monthly newsletter. The Levitt Letter. It's absolutely free and contains insightful article and news commentary with a refreshing perspective you won't get from the mainstream media. The Levitt Letter is also available at levitt.com along with current and archived TV programs, our national airing schedule, and much more. Please remember Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.